Hey guys, today I want to talk about Magic Online Trading League. So before we had Facebook groups that would trade Magic cards, or we had Pico Trade, or we have the numerous ways to trade and sell Magic cards like TCGplayer.com. And before we really had the advent of buy list that actually gave pretty decent prices. If you wanted to trade magic cards, you had to trust a complete stranger that you met on a forum called Magic Online Trading League. I had many good experiences on this forum and I remember the Jazz Ray and Gunslinger. So they were the moderators that have always been there. Uh, even when I first started playing Magic, they were there. Uh, this forum has existed for some time. I used it a lot in 2009, 2000 and no, that's not right. 2012. 2012 w was kind of the heyday. Now people use this or MTG Salvation to do the majority of the trades and that's what I did. And now we look at today where the forum is pretty much dead. I remember the last time I was really involved, it was Jazare needed to raise some money. Uh, something had happened to her and the whole community came together to help her out. So yeah, uh, and the Secret Santa was a big deal. I remember every year the Secret Santa was a huge deal and then 2018 it just kind of dies. Uh, the reason it died was it hasn't changed. This is the way it's always looked like. There was another forum that we moved to Texas. When I moved to Texas, it was called the uh, Texas Magic Forum. It was for the whole state of Texas, but it was mainly dominated by a few people I knew um, that I didn't like very much in Houston. And that looked the same as this forum. Over time, people just left because they had better ways to trade magic cards, mainly Puka Trade or Magic Facebook groups at that time. And it never grew. It never changed. It's kind of like Craigslist. It looks like it was a, it's Craigslist, right? And man, the time has been so harsh, but this is one of my fondest memories was going on the scammer site and seeing like if I knew any of the scammers. And yeah, it feels bad. Like I feel really sad. Um, I'll show you at the end of the video why I'm making this video is because the Secret Santa used to be such a big deal for this forum, for this trading league. And getting references was really hard. And you needed references because you could not you, you honestly could not send first because that was very dangerous. And the person with the least amount of references had to send first. So you had to do small trade. The way I did it was I did a lot of small trades, got my references up relatively high. And then when I wanted to do a big trade, I would have the references over someone. And then, of course, I would send the cards. Uh, they would send the cards. I would receive them. And then I would send the cards. And the whole thing about the tracking, you had to track on this website. It's, you had to track. But I remember sending cards to like Germany and Russia and like the Philippines, all these like random places. Um, I, I forget, it was one guy from the Philippines I did like five or seven trades with, with the span of like two months, right, to get our references up. And it was like smaller stuff. And I was like, it took me forever to figure out the Philippines because you need a custom order. You need a custom form. And if, it was great. I mean, it was really magical. This is what us dinosaurs used before Facebook groups. And your reputation would be... Um, and the danger here was if you got caught scamming, they would publish your name, they would publish your address, they would publish your phone number if they had it, and then they would just uh, pin it up. 
and that was very scary because that was back in the day when everyone was uh you no know, no one like on youtube you would never see a youtuber's face or for magic at least you would just see hands and a play mat and that's all you saw no one knew what any of the youtubers looked like because all you would see is hands and a play mat now that changed later but that was during the same time period and i was really into magic I was really into trading online because it was so addicting and it wasn't even the value. The value was like break even most times, but it was just the fact that you could get packets from anywhere. It's like Christmas, right? It's like Christmas and you could get packets anywhere, anytime, and you could track your packages. And um, I remember, yeah, I don't know if it's the Philippines, but it was like a small island country. And I was like, wow, where is this? And you would get mail with this randomly. And yeah, the big secret Santa was really fun. Um, I didn't live in the same home I did. So the uh, I lived in an apartment complex and I would just get, uh, my mailbox was really small. It was one of those group mailboxes. I lived all in Houston. When I first moved to Houston, and I was doing a lot of these trades. I lived in an apartment complex. So I got a PO box, which you paid monthly. And I remember not checking my mail because I was in San Francisco for two weeks and then I came home and it was like 15 different packages from all over and it was great. It was like Christmas and you never, I mean, you obviously I know what I traded for, but you don't know when came, which came first, which came second. There would be trade extras. Community was really excellent. Uh, the trade extras were almost as good as a trade many times. It's sad to see um, the decay of it. Um, it is sad to see uh, what it has become and it makes I mean it's kind of like this channel like the analogy of this channel I, I haven't changed uh, I haven't changed at all and you know the channel is probably not growing like some of the new channels are but I don't want to change I don't think magic online I think it should be a relic to the past of magic and that's where I come from. I'm a dinosaur of magic. This is how I used to trade. That's how we found, like, that's how I'd made so many of my friends in magic uh, that I haven't met. I put friends in quotation because I don't believe you can be friends with someone unless you actually meet them physically. Because if you didn't meet them physically, it means that you didn't really care enough to spend the effort to meet them physically. Right. But man, I mean, this is my sentiment. Um, he came there in 2002, then he lost his count, then he came back in 2006, then in 2015, then he sold his collection, and now he came back one more time. No upgrade, same forum. And then the uh, Secret Santa, um, man, they used to be such a big deal. Uh, we had a small turnout, but everyone had a great time. Oh, God. It just feels... And the MTG Salvation is the same way. I feel the same way. I was a moderator on, I think, General or whatever the biggest and most active forum was. Good times. I mean, these were the best times in, in Magic. They were probably, when I look back at the, it, this is why I loved Magic. Uh, where else can you meet a random stranger from anywhere from Russia and send them cards and then they send you cards? Now, the Puka Trade stuff and all this stuff, I mean, the Facebook groups, the evolution of magic trading and the TCG player, everyone in their mother now has a store on TCG player. Um, eBay, obviously, people sell cards on eBay. Uh, Craigslist, uh, people don't really do Craigslist anymore. But I love this. Um, and it's sad to see this. Bump to see if anyone's interested. November 21st. Uh, sorry man. It was a valiant attempt. So kudos for that. But there are not enough hardcore MTOTLEers around to do this apparently. It's sad. Um, I love this. Uh, this was my community. My community isn't like a YouTube community that donates me shit tons of money, right? My community is my local game store, Groovy Geckos, where you meet people from all walks of life, all different ages, 
with all different jobs. And then it's a tiny store. It smells like bad cheese. And you love those guys because, you know, you're a community. And then it bankrupts, and you come as a community to help it, and then it bankrupts again. That, that store bankrupt four or five times in three years. But I loved, I mean, I um, we had a dude called Gavin, and he went to uh, community college, I think Norfolk Community College, when I went to William Mary Law School. And he was, he was such a good guy. He was just a good guy. Uh, we had each other's phone numbers. We would hang out after. I remember we used to eat at Firehouse Subs. We walked to Firehouse Subs, which was like a 20-minute walk because we enjoyed each other's company. And that's what Magic Online Trading League was to me. As I have gotten older, and to be quite frank, as I have more disposable income, I would trade it all to go back to the Groovy Geckos or the MT when I was trading in 2012. And um, man, Magic was so much fun back then. And I, I think for the next few videos, I want to show you that, like what Magic was like for me, because many of you are new players. When I watched this, all these new YouTubers um, and they're like Magic Arena and, <laughs> you know, oh, come on, Kaladesh. It's so old, man. We're, we're opening old packs of Kaladesh nowadays. I have to laugh because, man, we didn't even have smartphones back in the day. We had flip phones. The Razer, what was it, the um, Motorola Razer? Like, no one had internet on it. And and when in 2010, I think GP Richmond, I know it's, it was in Richmond. It was some, some type of GP in Richmond. There was no signal in the convention hall. And no one could figure out the price of anything. Like, it was good. It was the good old days uh, of magic. Anyway, probably not for you guys, but it was for me. Bye, guys.